Good morning for AM 1340, 99.5 FM, WGRV. This is Reed Seals, and I'm here with Greene County Mayor Kevin Morrison. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Reed. And first question, how did you all decide what to use the government support grant for? Well, the uh, the money that was coming from the state government was very welcome. Uh, obviously, the governor, the state legislature saw a tremendous uh, need out in the counties and the municipalities to uh, supplement some of the some of the funding with some grant money. In Greene County, it started off that there was a about a half a million dollars awarded to the counties. At least that was Greene County's portion. Uh, other counties, based on population and, and infrastructure and things like that, got more. Uh, the governor, in his benevolence, came back, included the municipalities uh, in this plan and then came back once again and then doubled the amount that that all the entities were going to receive. Uh, there were six categories that were established that this money could be used for. It could not be used, for instance, for uh, uh, salaries or benefits or raises or bonuses or anything such as that. Uh, it had to be spent on infrastructure, uh, primarily uh, IT, uh, road projects, public safety, those types of things. Uh, we couldn't bank it, uh, in other words, and we needed a concrete plan uh, for those items. And again, there were six categories that we could choose from. One of those was the IT uh, upgrades, uh, data processing upgrades that uh, the county has very much needed for 30 years. Uh, when I was a county commissioner, they're actually still using the same phone system, the same data system from when I was a county commissioner back uh, in 2002. So we have put money forward for that. Uh, that was a project actually that the county commission had approved. So we can use this grant funding to support that project, for instance, as just an example, and then save the money that we were planning, uh, the tax dollars that we were planning to commit toward that project. Um, the other identified projects, if you will, uh, one was a CAD system that uh, is needed over at 911. Uh, that's a computer aided dispatching program that the dispatchers and the different agencies use uh, to record their calls. And uh, the last time that was replaced, uh, the city of Greenville did that. Uh, I feel that it's sort of our time to step up to the plate and do it in that fact that the uh, program currently over there is going to lose support. Uh, so those are a couple of a couple of things. The EMS, the TAC and radio system that we have, we got uh, the EMS radios added to the city's uh, TAC and tower out at on Mount Bethel Road so that they could better communicate inside uh, buildings here in town and at the hospital uh, so that they wouldn't miss any calls and be more responsive to uh, 911's uh, calls for help. Uh, so those are just a handful of the categories that we decided to do the spending on. Again, prioritize things that we feel that better serve our citizens here in Greenville and Greene County um, and, put to a, and put to a good use uh, in accordance with the categories that we, were, uh, that we received. So part of the uh, the grant, the county is going to put in an EMS substation in the Consumer Credit Union building that it purchased. Uh, why put an EMS substation there? Well, the uh, one of the uses for that uh, for that section of the building, obviously, it's the drive-through section. Um, not going to be utilized. Really, antiquated equipment uh, over there. Could it have been used for a drive-through type service? Yes, it would have been a remote location where we would have required additional uh, employees, uh, perhaps. We certainly don't want to increase sort of the size and the scope of government uh, to the point that we're sort of adding employees for remote locations like that. So given that, there's a section of the building over there that includes the drive-through portion, a couple of uh, utility utility closets and things like that that can be easily converted into, I believe, uh, restrooms, living, sleeping quarters for an EMS crew. And then there's been obviously the debate going on about uh, the dispersal of our ambulance fleet that is now housed at the headquarters over on the Tacoma campus 
we have four ambulances over there on any given day. Uh, as a general rule, the day truck and, and generally three units here in town uh, to service the city of Greenville. And, of course, the Board of Mayor and Aldermen have, have pointed out that, uh, that EMS, you know, again, not necessarily dispersed ideally and responsive to all sections of town. And we just feel that that, that, that location up there affords enough uh, space to be able to do that. Uh, the the drive-through lanes are actually ideal to enclose into a garage type facility uh, much like Enterprise Rental Car did with the old Bank of America building uh, down there next to the bypass in front of Staples uh, we would be doing essentially the same thing in housing ambulances in the in the drive-through lanes uh, of the CCU building and then the crews would be living in the quarters there where the uh, drive-through office was and that would give us actually on site up there 24 hour uh, personnel uh, in that in that building which would be you know good for security and things like that and it would again the most important reason obviously is it better serves the citizens of Greenville and Green County it uh, it puts two ambulances over there near the hospital right in the center of the bypass very close to uh, fire station number three uh, and be more responsive to uh, wrecks on the bypass uh, service to the northern and eastern side of town and that in conjunction with the Tusculum station out past uh, Walmart and the 107 uh, uh, cutoff and then with the Tacoma station on the western side of town uh, the, the city is, is fairly well covered and dispersed for, uh, for service for EMS. Tell me why the uh, or tell me about the possibility of the county and city taking over the transfer station and landfill. There is a possibility of that. Reed, we're currently in negotiations with uh, with the city. Uh, we're actually going to sit down here uh, in a in a few days and and talk about uh, the details and the particulars of who would be responsible for what, what the charges would be. But we certainly feel, both the city and the county leadership feel, that there are great savings in terms of taxpayer dollars. Uh, if we do this service versus if GFL, and GFL is the landfill contractor that used to be Waste Industries that has the landfill at uh, exit 12 in Morristown. Uh, that's currently where we haul all of our garbage, uh, a good portion of it goes to the transfer station on Old Stage Road and then is transferred into tractor trailers to be hauled to the lowland Morristown landfill. Uh, GFL, uh, formerly Waste Industries, has been the managing agency. They were contracted by the city of Greenville, who is the physical agent of the landfill uh, or the transfer station out there on Old Stage Road. Uh, it's a joint venture between the city and the county. Uh, We've sort of tried different types of management out there over the course of the years. As you know, uh, when I was a county commissioner, the, uh, the landfill was actually operated sort of separately. Uh, there was a Mr. Zipright was the landfill director, the transfer station manager out there, and uh, we sort of depended on them to do it. The county and the city would both uh, put in money toward its operation, and uh, and that's the way it operated. Uh, later, the that service, that entity, that facility was contracted out to GFL Industries. They managed the transfer station. They managed the demolition and construction waste landfill on top of the hill. And then they managed the transportation. Most recently, they contracted the transportation out to a third party. And obviously doing that in in contracting the different uh, the different responsibilities and duties, if you will, uh, cost additional money to do it. So in that, we saw, for instance, the ability for us to do the transportation, for us to manage the transfer station, for the city to go back to running the demolition and construction landfill on top of the hill and actually save tremendous taxpayer dollars. There's obviously some equipment that we need to assess and possibly purchase, but we feel we can do that, actually transport it, and pay uh, our employees to do that. 
uh, and have a relatively uh, good service, reliable service, dependable service, and save the taxpayers a significant amount of money. So we look forward to doing that. We just have to work out the details. Can you explain the economic impact plan for the Nissan dealership that was approved both by the County Commission and the Greenville Board of Mayor and Aldermen? The economic impact plan for the Nissan dealership was, uh, that's, that's a good thing. We did one of those, as you recall, here not too long ago for uh, the Chick-fil-A restaurant. <clears throat> that's a way for any type of municipality or county um, to give incentive to make investment in our community. It, um, it's dollars for, you know, much needed, for instance, infrastructure. It brings jobs. Uh, and growth to attract other things, other businesses, other jobs. Uh, so it's a very sort of forward-thinking concept in the fact that um, the developer of the property is is given uh, is given a break on on taxes, for instance, uh, over time in terms of the difference in the value. Uh, as a general rule, the value stays static for. And I'm talking about the value of the property stays static for what it is now versus what it becomes once the dealership is completed. That's offset for a period of, uh, of time. And then, uh, and again, that's just an incentive, for instance, to bring jobs to our community, to build infrastructure in our community, to make uh, dollar investments in our community. And then that becomes attractive to other people looking at Greenville and Greene County to locate here. And uh, uh, we're, we're happy to do that. The, uh, the dealership down there, as I understand, according to uh, Lenny, is going to be one of the only sort of dual uh, dealerships uh, in the country. Uh, they'll have a Nissan uh, facade essentially facing 11E and be its own separate dealership. And then the, the Ford Gateway Ford dealership uh, facing the uh, uh, AMC Theater uh, would be separate as well. So we look forward to the completion of that project and the investment of Nissan in our community and keeping the Nissan dealership here in uh, Greenville so that we don't have to go elsewhere and then the number of jobs that it provides as well. And what still needs to be done to transition out of the coronavirus shutdown? Well, the uh, the city of Greenville and, uh, and I developed a, a three-phase plan to... Uh, reopen our economy and restart the uh, our community here away from the coronavirus. I think what we've seen, at least as of as of today, right now, we have no active cases in Greene County that we're tracking. We've had a total of 46 cases uh, as of this broadcast. Um, no active cases being reported and two deaths. Uh, it, it seems that there may be a seasonal component uh, to this virus. We don't know that for certain. Uh, I certainly don't have any insight on that. But uh, there are there's testing continuing to take place uh, in different locations at the health department here. We've not necessarily found any new cases. Uh, it is a very serious thing uh, to take serious. But we feel that we can transition and begin to open more and more things. Governor Lee started at the end of April, uh, April 27th, opening restaurants, April 29th, opening uh, retail establishments 50%. He opened gyms and fitness facilities May 1st, hair salons and barbershops on uh, May the 6th, and other things have taken place since then. Uh, a big one uh, comes this Friday when uh, we open sort of mass attraction type things. Uh, like amusement parks, roller skating arenas, racetracks, and the like, uh, this Friday, uh, May 22nd. So um, what's left to do is essentially monitor what the governor's orders are and his directives and follow the guidance put out by uh, the state, and, uh, and we can get back to sort of a more normal operation, if you will, hopefully. But now is the time to prepare. If this virus does have a seasonal component and it rears its ugly head again here in the fall or toward the winter, we need to be prepared. Uh, we need to stay vigilant. Um, there's a lot of people, for instance, doing uh, sanitization, sterilization, infection control, um, things that we've never done before. Social distancing certainly has worked. 
um, keeping keeping groups down into low numbers has has certainly worked. Um, so all of those things have sort of combined to be able to give us the opportunity to reopen. Uh, but essentially what we're waiting on now is for the governor's orders to expire or for him to issue guidance on what we can uh, go forward with, and we look forward to that in the future. Well, I want to thank Greene County Mayor Kevin Morrison for joining us today, and he will be back next month for another interview. This is Reed Seals for AM 1340 and 99.5 FM WGRV.